Well, that means. Oh no! I joined and all I heard was Knight going, you know what that means. <laughs> Welcome to a video on how to get good at the soldier, a class not only more friendly to newer players, but is equipped with so much versatility, utility, and ability to randomly crit people back to their fucking spawn point, that is a wise sound smith once said. Either you main him, or you got him in your back pocket and you can play him if you need to. Players who can master what soldier can provide can either be the best damage dealer on their team, or actually enable their teammates to get their fucking jobs done. Let's get started. The soldier is one of the three offense classes in the game and is known to be relatively easy for newer players to pick up and play this American Patriot. The soldier has 200 health and is the second slowest class in the game at only 240 hammer units per second, making him fairly slow on foot. Though once we progress further into the video, soldier's movement is actually not as handicapped as one may believe and can actually become one off, if not the most mobile class in the game. The soldier's primary weapon of choice is of a rocket launcher capable of high area damage and disrupting enemies. The rockets fired travel rather slowly so the player will need to account for their travel time when using the weapon at range but they do not arc and travel in a perfect straight line which will be important later. The weapon fires 1.25 times per second and has 4 rockets per clip before needing to reload which takes 0.92 seconds for the first rocket and 0.8 seconds for every consecutive rocket you have to reload. Up to 20 rockets are carried in reserve. Each rocket fired has a base damage of 90 with its splash damage scaling to a minimum of 50% depending on how far the rocket lands away from the victim within a generous radius. If the player manages to get right into an enemy's face then they can deal up to a maximum of 112 damage for a direct hit. However, this also runs the risk of damaging yourself if you're too close when the rocket explodes. The rocket's damage output does suffer greatly at long range, going down to only 48 damage for a direct hit, and even less for the splash damage. Because of how the rocket launcher functions, you'll want to secure high ground above your enemies, as to take as much advantage of the splash damage as you can, especially since the blast radius is extremely generous, which can grant you the potential to hit multiple enemies at once. Additionally, when hitting enemies with the rocket launcher, depending on where they are relative to the explosion, they will be knocked around in the opposite direction. This can be useful in displacing enemies out of position, as well as either separating them from their pocket medics, or even pushing them into environmental hazards. This is also where we get into the art of rocket jumping. This mechanic is essential to know as a soldier, both in terms of positioning, as well as covering large distance relatively quickly. For the sake of this guide, we will keep things relatively simple, and stick to the classic vertical momentum that a rocket jump can provide, by aiming the rocket launcher at the ground and pressing the jump and shoot button at the same time, you can send yourself flying into the sky, granting you access to high ground that you previously could not reach. This can be useful in either gaining an immediate advantage over your enemies, reposition yourself, or retreat away. However, like briefly mentioned earlier, if you are too close to the explosion when it takes place, then you will take a bit of self damage as a result, which is the price to pay when rocket jumping, so always make sure you have the health to spare, or you may look like the biggest dumbass known to man. Another thing to consider when playing as this overly American man, is the simple existence of the pyromaniacs on the enemy team, and how intelligent they may be, since these crazy ass motherfuckers, can reflect your rockets right back in your face, by using the sequel to the W plus M1 move, known simply as the air blast, case and point, unless you're confident in that the pyro on the enemy team, has the same amount of intelligence as the average Elsa Gate fan. Under no circumstances should you ever shoot a rocket directly at a pyro, since they can just perform the air blast of no you and send that shit straight back into your face. This is especially deadly if the game decides to give you a random crit, since if the pyro reflects it, they essentially get handed an entire team kill for free on a silver fucking plate. Now when it comes to your secondary slot, it entirely depends on how you want to play and what role you want to fulfill on your team. 
If you wish to have access to as much damage as possible and have a safe way to engage against pyros, then equipping a shotgun is suggested. The stock can be useful for all around situations. The panic attack for if you need a source of damage and you're out of rockets. And the reserve shooter for those who can pull off insane combos with more reflexes than a 15 year old Japanese kid that overdosed on Adderall mixed with crystal meth. If you like rocket jumping all over, then the gunboats will be a great option in most cases, as they reduce how much self damage you take from your rocket launcher by 60%, allowing you to do rocket jumps whilst keeping a sizable portion of your health pool in the process. Alternatively, the man treads grant a much larger degree of control whilst in the air, and are great for those who play far too much Mario, since they allow you to stomp on enemies depending on how far you've fallen. Though if you're a soldier who wishes to be a team player, either because you feel like it, or because your teammates cannot do shit at all, then a banner will provide both the utility and buffs for your teammates to actually get shit done. From mini crits, to defense buffs, to speed boosts, each banner can provide sometimes devastating effects that your team will benefit from greatly, or yourself if they're too busy trying to play past the parcel with the hoobies fucking sandwich. Now for your melee weapon of choice, once again. It entirely depends on play style, either in wanting utility, or wanting more damage. Half of soldiers melee weapons solely grant utility, like the escape plan speed boost the less health you have, extra capturing speed with the pain train, or even providing speed boosts for your team thanks to the disciplinary action, as well as showing them in the nicest way possible that you are about to make them your bitch. The other half are in the damage department. We have the equalizer, which deals more damage the less health you have, the self healing of the half that achieve, and the infamous market gardener, which grants guaranteed critical hits whilst rocket jumping. These choices entirely depend on what kind of player you want to be, either for yourself or for your teammates. In terms of strengths, Soldier is an extremely versatile class that is very easy to pick up and play. His rocket launcher can deal massive area of effect damage, grant him access to enhanced mobility, and can deal with an engineer's buildings at a distance. His wide arsenal can make him adaptable to next to all situations, from having more damage with his shotguns to powerful utility from his banners. However, the soldier's overall movement speed is relatively slow, only being slightly faster than a heavy on foot. His rockets, whilst providing powerful firepower, can be reflected back at him by pyro, which can kill him if it happens to be critical. Rocket jumping also comes at the price of health, which can make you more vulnerable with the loss of health. Lastly, whilst banners are capable of providing powerful utility buffs, they do leave you without a shotgun weapon, so direct firepower will be sacrificed in this regard. Thanks to this guide, you will now know how adaptable soldier can be, both in terms of being a damaging powerhouse, as well as being perhaps one of the most impactful members of your team. Be sure to come back for the next episode next week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more shit like this. Have fun.